name is Dina Mengestu, and I'm a novelist, journalist, and now a professor. Growing up in the suburbs of Chicago, I think one of the one of the sort of joys and problems of that is that there was no one else who had the same narrative experience as my family. There were very few other immigrants from Africa, and there were very few people who knew what it meant to be an African immigrant. My novels, I think, are their cross-section between, between Africa and America. They oftentimes are concerned with immigrants and refugees from Africa who have arrived in America and are forced to recreate and rebuild their own lives. And at the same time, I think there's another half that's also deeply concerned about American culture and politics and how those two are intertwined with immigrant communities that are a part of the country now. Or well, we're supposed to be interrogating the poet to some degree. Like why we want I think when I'm writing, I'm, I'm less concerned about trying to portray an immigrant experience or say that this is the immigrant narrative. I think you know, American literature is full of immigrant narratives. We know the story quite well. I think part of what I'm definitely interested in doing is adding to the complexity and layers of the immigrant narrative in America. It's now becoming a part of the African-American and the African immigrant tradition in American literature. And at the same time, of course, I think like all novelists, I'm driven by the belief that people are fundamentally the same and that I can write the story of an Ethiopian immigrant in Washington, D.C., and that someone living in Kansas can find themselves reflected in that narrative, that an immigrant narrative is no different from a human narrative. If there's one lasting emotion that I try and hope for when, when writing a piece of fiction, and oftentimes, of course, there's never just one, but a, but a series of interconnecting feelings and thoughts that you hope the readers take away with them, is one, both that there's a profound joy that can be found in, in isolation and in rebuilding our lives and that sometimes the hardest thing to do is opening ourselves up to one another and finding our own fallibility and finding our own weakness and allowing ourselves to expose that to each other. When, when I first received the phone call about the fellowship, I was, uh, I was actually in, in Africa at the time um, at a literary festival in, in Nairobi that's there to promote literacy and, and writing in Africa and especially in Kenya. It was obviously enormously, amazingly overwhelming at the time. And at the same time, it felt remarkably appropriate to be there and to be in a community that I felt like I was desperately trying to sort of reach out to him throughout my own work. And if anything, I think part of what the MacArthur Fellowship does is that it reminds me that the work I've done is, 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 is relevant, that not because of necessarily what I write about, but about the people that I think populate my work and that those people have a significance and meaning that sometimes might be overshadowed or, or lost in the kind of larger narrative of, of, of the world. And it's important to keep writing out of those experiences. Mm -hmm.